Good afternoon. Today's might be interesting. Um, before I jump into the whole thing, let me start with my name and introduction so we can get onto this topic. It's been brewing all day. Um, my name is Barry Selby. I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I'm also a strong, successful, sorry, I also help strong, successful women. I am? No, I help. Strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which is one reason why this topic is on top. Is, is up there for me. So um, before I get to that, though, let me introduce what this is about. By the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do these Facebook Lives every day. This is number 358, so almost a year's worth, in a series called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. So this being number 358, topics sometimes come out of the blue, and today's no different. So it's called slut shaming. Yes, I'm using that term, slut shaming. And it's actually to do with a video I watched earlier today. It's a Vice, um, from, the, from the show Vice, interview with, with Amber Rose, who is fairly well known in the hip hop movement and in a lot of Hollywood circles. And she does a thing called the Slot Walk every year because of what happened to her earlier. And we speak a little bit about that, but where I want to go is actually a much bigger piece of this. And it's going to tie into me too. Yes, it's going to tie into me too. So, first of all, if you have, an, have a charge or an upset of the word slut, that's for you to deal with. Because I'm using the term in this conversation because of what's been used as a label. And I want to get behind that in a moment, so, I'll get, so bear with me. But also because of what's construed by that. You know, when someone's called a slut, what does that mean to you? That's first of all, it's a question I'm going to ask you up front. So you can think about this as we're going through this, because this topic is going to go hopefully deeper. I have some planned things I want to talk about. But being an unplanned and unscripted and I don't have notes or a cheat sheet in front of me, um, it's going to go where it goes. And of course, if there's any input and questions and comments from the viewers who are in live, that will also move things around as well. So today might be an interesting conversation. We'll see. And then again, it might be just a, a nine minute talk and that'll be the end of it. We'll see what happens. But I'll make some very important. I want to make what I feel are important points, at least um, challenges to the status quo. Because, you know, if you watch my broadcast, I'm pretty good at that. So first of all, so let me back up a second. So again, I saw a video, a, a replay video um, online, and I'll post the link to that in the comments below after I sign off so you know what I'm talking about. An interview with um, a reporter from Vice who I'm trying to remember her name in a second, Amanda something. She was basically put in prison in Italy because she was apparently acute, was it was raped and they actually put her in jail because she was too promiscuous or something like that and I may have misconstrued it so bear with me she was the interviewer the interviewee the person being interviewed was Amber Rose who is certainly a stranger to being visible and very sexually appealing in her look because she's very shapely and she wears really big clothing but some things she said in the interview first of all that really struck me which is she said that she grew up very young I mean sorry grew up very young we all grew up very young she spent most of her young early years when she was basically in her late teens, early 20s in a strip club, pole dancing and everything else. But the thing she said in it was saying it's very hard. It, once you basically get to strut around on the stage and perform in front of people, get lots of love and get lots of money thrown at you, it's kind of like that works. And she said she's making $100,000, $150,000 a year cash, no tax or anything doing that. For a 20 something, that's a pretty like genius idea in a way, even though it isn't puritanically correct because it's against the rules because you're being visible but it's like you're not having sex with people at least that's the truth it may not be what people believe but that's what's going on fast forward a little bit she said also that she had had some interesting relationships with a lot of people in the hip-hop movement including Kanye West and a few other people and after they dumped her or after they broke up very at least a couple of the artists that were portrayed in this video made music wrote songs, lyrics, and in music videos to totally trash her, like her directly. At least that was the perception. So the viewpoint was that the men weren't happy after they broke up and decided to make her life miserable afterwards in, her, in their own way by the songs they wrote, the lyrics they wrote for the songs. So what's I going to do with anything? Well, <laughs> it's, a, it's a mixed conversation here. First of all, and most, for me, important about this is how men treat women, period. This is the big picture. I'm going to get to back to that in a second. And I've got a PS about the Me Too movement in there as well. The judgments, and, and this is going to say one thing. Um, when I posted this video on, on my page earlier today, I got there was actually been an interesting, 
I'll say conversation between two different women, women, who were taking different sides and viewpoints on this, on this perspective. And one of them is of the view that she was a money grabber and that she's after attention. She said that, she, that Amber said that at the beginning of the interview, so no brain, no, no argument. However, what she's done with it, and this is the key, in from her, from for her, what she's done with it is she's started launching this thing called the slut walk, which basically was an intention for women to claim their power back through that owning of the word in a way that was no longer painful for them. And that's important. Because when people have charges on words that are used against them, you're at the mercy of somebody using it against you. I've talked about this before about codependence. This is the same thing. If someone calls you, ladies, if someone calls you a bitch or a slut or a whore or whatever, and you have a charge on the words, then you will be offended by that and upset by that, which puts you at the mercy of this person who is basically upsetting you. It means you give them the power to upset you. And I don't think you want that. So first of all, Remove the charge from certain words. If you get called certain things, being called whatever it is. I mean, I, I went through that as a teenager. I was, I was, I had lots of words thrown at me being a Jewish kid in a non-Jewish school and being bullied through that time. I felt the sting of those words and I was victim of that upset. I got upset because they were using these heinous words against me. You know, that whole statement about, you know, what stick, um, sticks and burnt stones may break my bones, but words never hurt me. It's very true. We choose to make those words shameful we used to choose to make those words impactful upon us and then we let people use them against us that's like here give them the knife and let them stab you don't do that that's one thing actually i've done about seven one thing so far <laughs> right eighth thing <laughs> what she's also done i think this is important as well in what, what amber has done since this journey she's been on that she created this thing called the slut walk as i mentioned i think the slut walk slut march slut walk and the numbers of women who showed up to the marches has grown up astronomically over the period of three or four times she's done it, which is amazing and wonderful and reassuring. And that's part of this piece that for me is about having people get that there's a support system out there for people who are suffering from these um, challenges. So for me, the whole slut shaming thing and it is both men and women slut shaming other men and women because it isn't gender specific in a lot of ways. Although in this case, it was based on a woman being slut shamed by men. That terminology, first of all, you can only be ashamed if you don't own the word. And that's what she said, and I really agree with this. If you can't own the words that are thrown at you as slander, then you will be shamed by them. But if you own the words, and if you find the words have no impact on you, there's no shame, and they can no longer hurt you. That's a very empowering place to be, by the way. I mean, I've said that before, and I'll say it again. It's a very important piece for people to learn, is those, when you claim those words, you own those words. Not saying, say, walk around and say proudly that I am that. It's not saying you go around, you know, you know in the video, Amber's got these hats with, say, slut on them. I mean, that's one way of doing it. But if you take on these words so they don't have the impact they did before, because you take the pain out of them because they no longer affect you, because you realize those words come from a very wounded place in the other people, then your ability to be hurt is diminished, as in you don't feel wounded as easily and you become stronger. That's a whole other teaching we're getting to, but there's a piece I want to get to because it's been on my mind too. I'll leave that where it is and move with the other piece right now. So change your gear slightly and I'll come back and I will, I will circle this back. Okay, complete change of gears. I've been watching... Um, the Daily Show outtakes, so I should say the Daily Show behind the scenes, so between the scenes, excuse me, between the scenes. I'll, I'll put the link for that in the YouTube as well, in below too, but on YouTube, uh, Trevor Noah does these one, two minute chats with the audience between scenes when they're going a commercial break. And they've collected these on, on YouTube and they're really cool. One of them I saw yesterday, it's an old one from maybe February, and I'll, again, I'll put the link to that one in the comments as well. He was talking about, it was after the, um, um, the sentencing of, uh, what's his name, NASA, Nassar, Nassar, the guy who was the Olympic gymnastic coach who basically had been accused of sexually molesting uh, over 150 girls. It was a powerful time. So I think it was back in February, I think this was. And what Trevor was talking about was, was just feeling that, about how the women, how first of all, the judge was, um, the woman judge was so on it. Because there was sentencing, she could give her opinion. It wasn't the actual trial. So she didn't be impartial. And each she had each of the girls off, come up and able to, to make their own declarations, their own statements, their own... Um, response if they were and it was very moving 
But one thing you said at the back end, which is which for me was profound, and I want to say this here because I agree with it totally, was that there were so many, um, well, as he put it, people who didn't choose to respond, meaning that. In the case, and this is the Me Too conversation I'm talking about, by the way. So NASA basically had over many years abused and hurt all these girls, sexually assaulted these girls. But nobody at the Olympic Committee, nobody at the university, nobody in this community, none of the parents got together and made a stand against him. For all these years, he got away with it. But the truth is, and this is what I believe is the case, is many of those people did know what was going on, but they swept it under the rug. And what Trevor said, and I think it was profound, I think it's really true, and I hope they make it a law, is he joked about it being like if, if someone, you know, if, if NASA won this one, this, this um, jail sentence and massive fine, that anybody who enabled him would be an agent would get 10% of that. And what, it, what I mean literally, and what he meant literally, is that, like in case of Harvey Weinstein or of Bill Cosby or any of these people who have been either accused or prosecuted or sentenced for sexual harassment, sexual abuse, sexual molestation of anybody, male or female, there are people out there who knew what was happening and didn't say anything about it. That, well, I'm say it this way, that has to stop. If your sister is getting molested by your dad or by the neighbor for 10, 15 years and you never said anything about it, you're almost as guilty yourself. And I mean that intentionally for family dynamics, but it's just in business environments, because this is where the Me Too comes from mostly, is from the business and that power position. The fact that Weinstein Company hasn't been fined, prosecuted, shut down by the judge for being supportive of him getting away with it, something missing in our justice system. So I believe firmly that if you are an enabler of this to happen, where you do not step up and say no more, where you don't tell the authorities, where you don't say something to stop it from happening, then you're culpable just as much as the person doing it. Not saying you get the same same sentence, but you you deserve to be charged because you are an accessory to the crime. So there's something very something very out of alignment there. And what and what Trevor said was very profound on that. So I'm just ed- reiterating what he said. This is not my original thought. Just to be clear, I'm just repeating what I heard him say. So that's the Me Too piece. That was uh, this side. So back to the first part about slut shaming. Yes, it does tie together. Because what I'm aware of is how. Men generally, in particular, will get together, or should say, were as groups, where one of them will start insulting a woman, like it is the building, like the traditionally is the building site, but it could be anywhere, you know, a bar, it could be walking down the street, where one guy's going to whistle at the girl, or do whatever it's going to be, and the other guys join in. That is the man boy syndrome I talked about before, but it's also about not being willing to step up and say no. And I've, I've done it a couple of times where I've said no. And it's kind of scary to be stepping out of the crowd. That's the biggest heart for us men. It's, it's harder for us to step out of a crowd of other men and go, no, that's not right. We shouldn't be doing this. Like calling other men out to stop doing that sort of behavior because it could get worse. And the truth for me more and more is that more men are waking up, which is good, but more men need to wake up to be um, shining the light on these darker areas, to shine the light both on the crimes on men who don't respect women, on actions that aren't in support of men or women, either one, because the Me Too movement does actually hit both sides of the sense. Both men and women have been victims of it as well as perpetrators. But it's generally been more men towards women. So what I'm inviting, suggesting, encouraging is that all of us take a vow (laughs) or a pledge to be willing to not be silent, to not step aside and let shit happen to other people. You know, it happens, happens politically and happens um, militarily, where it's been challenged enough where things have been suppressed. I mean, what's that mean? Syria and Iran and other places where the media is not repeat, reporting the truth, so we've got to do our own research. But let's bring it home, where it's more personal, where it's somebody in your own circle of influence, a friend, family, co-worker, where they're being impacted negatively because they're being abused, harassed, whatever that is, and you're letting it happen. You may not be perpetrating it, but you are contributing if you don't step up and say something. So my call to you, my invitation, my encouragement, I won't demand it, but I encourage it, is that if that's something you're witnessing, do something, say something, stop it happening.
You may not be able to stop it happening physically because you may not be able to step up against the person doing it, but you can report it at least. You can bring other people into the conversation. You can actually force an intervention like they do with addicts. If you gather several other people together at once and confront that person, that could be helpful to stop them doing it. And it might save the life, the psyche, and the well-being of the other person who got, who got victimized. So, so that's that. <laughs> so coming full circle back to the beginning, which is the slut shaming thing I was talking about with Amber Rose. Personally, yes, she is, as somebody said, she's in it for herself to a degree, and I won't argue with that. She's made a lot of money doing what she did. And I said at the beginning, she was, you know, in the early 20s, she was a stripper making tons of money. She's like, why don't people throw money at her for doing it? She's like, why would she not do it? So she, she, in that sense, I understand. But the second thing is what she does with it, that's important, and what you do with things. If you've had past experiences where you weren't necessarily proud of what you did, but you did it anyway because of whatever reasons, the question is, what do you do with it now? Damn, I'm really going to put so many, I put so many things to provoke stuff in here. Hmm. <laughs> because the thing is, what I'm aware of for her is that she has taken on a different role since then. She's still messing around in the area, but at the same time, she's also doing some contributions that help women in general, and that's a powerful thing. I think that's everything. I just like It was like a, more of a rant than anything else, so I apologize if I didn't give you any clear like linear teaching. It was like just giving you points to think about, so I hope that has been useful. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so here's your homework. Yes, if you haven't watched my broadcast before, I do give homework. This one is simply this. Review this broadcast and see if there's any action you need to take. Literally, if there's something where what I've said provoked you, inspired you, open up a spot of pain, take steps towards healing that. Take, take steps towards incorporating that. Take steps towards changing what's going on. <clears throat> Don't be a bystander anymore. That's your homework. Um, I think that's it for this topic. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live number 358. I do this every day. Um, you can watch these on my YouTube channel as well as on Facebook because I do put them there when I'm finished. All of my broadcasts, including this one, will be on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, as well as on YouTube, which is Barry Selby is the channel, Meshus the Masculine is the playlist, and also on my website, where if you want to, you can find them on my video blog. And also, once you're there, you can sign up for a discovery session with me. It's my gift to you. Uh, if you go to barryselby.com forward slash chat, you can set up for a conversation. It's a 30-minute gift from me to you. And um, we can talk. I think that's it. You've got homework. If this appeals, if this resonates for you and you want to share it with people, please share this with other people. I welcome that. Um, and if you're watching this in replay and you want to put comments below, I will answer the comments later on. Thank you for being with me. Thanks for the, the uh, receptivity. And uh, I hope this made sense. I think it did. It came out. It needed to come out. I need to get it out. So hopefully it helped you. I will put in the comments the links to the Vice video and also that YouTube replay for Trevor Noah. And with that, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.